Welcome everybody here in Twitch chat and also on YouTube in the future for Teamer Midrange. So this was um, a this was not a, a deck I, I built. This was one of the 5-0 lists from I believe January 24th update, but it, it looked pretty fun and it was certainly something that I wanted to try. Magic Carry with the sub. Welcome back for the second month in a row. There you go. Um, so I haven't played a whole lot of Skargon Hellkite, just kind of in general. Um, and uh, so that's that's something that uh, a card that I'm, I'm excited to play. And kind of the same with Gruul Spellbreaker. Like these are two cards that, you know, are on the, the aggressive side for Gruul decks usually. And usually I play like more uh, mid-range control version of Gruul decks and not as aggressive. So I'm excited to try these out. Um, Hadana's Climb, of course, is just amazing with Growth Chamber Guardian and Inc Incubation Druid, the two drops. And, of course, it's real good with uh, uh, finishing games out quickly, which is what we're going to be trying to do with these uh, powerful early game threats. We still have some good late game, though, with Vivian's and Hydroid Crisis, so it's not like we're only aggro. So it's kind of interesting to see how this is going to work out. Um, as far as mana base-wise, I, I do think that we probably have too many green sources. Um, overall, let's see, there's 19 green sources, and kind of comparing it to the other colors, like I, I'm pretty worried about blue. Uh, in particular. Blue, there's only, uh, let's see, 11 blue sources in the deck. And if we want to, like, Hadana's Climb early, uh, that's going to be kind of hard with only 11 blue sources. So I'm, I'm pretty worried about that. We'll, you know, I'm going to play the deck as is, um, and uh, we'll kind of, you know, have that in mind as we play these games. That's, that's something that maybe needs to adapt. Like, maybe one of these forests needs to be another Steam Vents kind of thing. But uh, let's get to the games. Let's see how it plays out. Okay, so you, th you think 11 blue sources is sufficient? Okay. Oh, I didn't even claim the prize from before, from the last one. Well, there we go. We got 1,000 gold. We got our, our entry fee back from Azoria Super Friends. And 20 gems. All right. Uh, Teamer midrange. Here we go. Spellbreaker has me pumped, but I've yet to see it really live up to its potential. Yeah, it's it's kind of hard for those creatures to, to really live up to their potential of, like, you know, not having the ETB effects when you have something like Jade Light Ranger that, you know, can potentially draw you two cards, or if it doesn't, it's really fixing your draw. Um, but it is really hard-hitting, and, you know, Spellbreaker on turn two is pretty awesome. Red Deck Wins is is a deck I, I play against a bunch on here. It's that and Esper Control, I'd say, are the, the two most the two decks I play against the most. Just one versus Bant Nexus with your Super Friends list. Alright, way to go, Higher Visions. So again, um slightly worried about our the whole blue source thing here. <laughs> Midrange decks are basically just piles of rares. That's you're not wrong. So it wins in standard, or mythics win games in standard. Hmm. Uh, love this block. Yeah, absolutely love everything about this turn. That our Growth Chamber Guardian survived. It didn't get shocked. We could just kill an Instigator. Go put another one in our hand. That's a great turn for us. I don't have many shock lands, but have enough rare wild cards to support a two color, not three. And I want to try something more mid range or control. Any recommendations? Um. Okay, so we want to go two color. Uh, is it Drake's is a really strong two color deck that you kind of just need the the rare lands and that's about it. Like you can have like Crackling Drakes, uh, Terramanders, Enigma Drakes, all that kind of stuff. A bunch of spells that aren't rares. I think that's a that's a really good option. Um, anyway, we had some bits here from Hoi Kanoi 
found you yesterday when I was working in the night shift. Love the stream. Welcome. I'm glad you're here. So they did have a shock. All right, we got a breeding pool. We are good to go. Uh, I guess I could just play Hellkite. Yeah, I should just play Hellkite. Hidana's climb is also awesome with Hellkite. Um, I guess I didn't, didn't mention this before, but how, like, if you give it haste, you can only activate that ability if it has a counter. Well, if you, you can put a counter on it with the, the Hidana's climb, and then you can start activating that ability. So that's really cool. Okay. Had an inkling that our opponent was just kind of playing the cards they owned. Oh, whoops, I didn't play my breeding pool. Well, oh well, we still have lethal. But I don't get to act activate my Hedonis climb, which would have been cool. The, the standard, all right, so when do we think that the standard plus is gonna happen, like on arena? I think at rotation. I think, I don't think it'll be uh, implemented before that, but I, I think that at, at rotation is when it'll be implemented. Um, that's referring to like a, a format on Arena where you can use cards that have rotated. <laughs> I'm I'm excited to play Fake Modern. I think that would be fun. I mean, new formats to me are basically always fun. You know, but like new formats, whenever no one really knows what they're doing, everybody's just you know, playing the, the decks that they want to. There's no real metagame yet. That's that's fun to me, and so I'm I'm excited for. Uh, yeah, as you, as you said, fake modern. Um. So we're playing against a red deck. I'm gonna get a fourth lava coil in over a Vivian Reed, and maybe a negate over a Vivian Reed or a Cannonade or a Brontodon. I don't know. Don't expect to have too much trouble in this matchup. I'll just keep the Vivian Reed, actually. We saw a dragon. Yeah, it, it'll be interesting to see how far back uh, sets that they re-add to Arena, if they, you know, how far back, if at all, um, sets that are added to Arena. I would think, I mean, it would certainly take a lot of, you know, man hours and everything, a lot of time to add in, you know, a bunch of more sets and have animations for all the cards and everything. But I would think there would be a good um, investment on their part as, because then if there's like, you know, uh, you know, two years of sets, like eight, eight sets. Uh, added on to arena. That's a whole lot more cards that you need to get on your account And so that's like more money that people will want to spend um, And I feel like so I feel like it would be a uh, It'll be it would be beneficial for them to Take that time <laughs> Yep, you'll have the most busted red deck wins deck ever <laughs> I, I think, so you said, yeah, you said you'd hope we get Amonkhet block because you missed out on our devastation completely. Um, I would, I would expect Amonkhet block and Kaladesh block to be added at the very minimum. Um, those ones were, were sets that were already on Arena before the uh, rotation here, before the change to open beta. They were in the closed beta. And so I don't think it would be difficult to implement those sets. Um, back into arena. No wild growth walkers in this list, no. Oh, 
All right, we really are just playing against a beginning player. Would I want Kaladesh added, though? It's a good question. I I would not want Sahili Rai and Felidar Guardian in like added. Um, I would not want those two cards together. Yep, everyone starts somewhere. If I go haste spellbreaker this turn and then haste spellbreaker next turn, I'm still not at like I'd be attacking for 14 total, so I wouldn't have lethal. So I'm just going with the 4-4. Four, four. Alright, if I... Oh, wait. No, let's see. If I would have done another 3, they'd be at 12, and then I'd play another 3-3, three, three, and yeah, that would have been 11. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So they would have gone to 1. Right. Okay. Right. So yeah, if we make a 3-3 right now, we attack them down to... We could attack them down to 3, but we'll just have them at 6. How do I feel about Helm of the Host? I think it is too slow for standard, but it's a, a, a fun card to play if you don't mind not winning all the time, but just kind of building your deck around it. It's it's an enjoyable card, um, but I, I think it's too slow for competitive standard. Alright, so then what about Aetherworks Marvel? Would that be... Oh, right. I have this Wing Temple chilling over here. I just completely forgot about this Wing Temple this whole time. Hmm. I probably had lethal the previous turn then. Should have gone haste, haste. Or just haste and then activate. Or activate, activate. Um. So if... Aetherworks Marvel would not have... It wouldn't have any of like the big Eldrazi, which were like a, a huge problem with it. Um, and the other thing is, the format would be a lot better than what Standard was when Aetherworks Marvel was in Standard. Uh, just because, you know, there's going to be just so many more cards and everything will be a lot faster. It'll be harder to just, you know, just play like a Tune, Puzzle Knot, Rogue Refiner, and then into Marvel. Um, like the hands where you stumble, like I, I feel like that deck would would probably lose to a lot of aggressive decks, kind of thing, but maybe not. Uh, how busted would Force of Will make Control? Uh, it would certainly make Control a lot better, uh, even though it's not as good in Standard as it is in Legacy because of the card disadvantage. But it would allow Control to play more of the card draw effects and still have like the counter magic up. It certainly make control better, but I, d I don't know if it would be busted. I also don't really know why I'm keeping this hand. This probably should not be a keep. I need to check back in, too. Uh, I need to check back in. I was a little checked out there with that, that game, that last one. Drawn perfectly. Once the arena modern card pool is large enough, what do you think about a rotating modern format that picks eight sets to combine with, combine from among all the modern sets? It would keep modern fresh and also have interesting interactions that were never present in standard due to mixing new and old sets. I see. So you're saying, so what if... So I see I see what you're saying. So you're saying, like, what if 
um, instead of just having it the same all the time. What if they would just rotate sets? It's an interesting dy dynamic to kind of look at. I think Esper is probably the best color combination for control currently. Well, I didn't get any damage in with those, which is a, a little rough. Yeah, we missed six damage, but the thing is, is three threes just don't, you know, three threes don't pressure our opponent too much. Um, but yeah, we certainly missed six damage. Right on schedule. Hold that thought. Do you think Krasis could be splash splashable in Esper mid range? I think maybe like an Esper Control. I'm not sure about a, a mid range. If you, so you're thinking like three Krasis? I'm not sure if either if that's splashable or if that's necessary. Ooh, we're punishing our opponent so hard for using that cast down there. Haste. One one counter. This is hardly my worst defeat. Okay, well, that, at least that's Teferi. That's not Teferi's worst worst defeat. Polyraptor with Helm of the Host on. <laughs> that sounds like that's an amazing time. Okay. Alright, so they got active Ascanta. No, don't take my Krasis. Okay, you got the Helm of the Host with Polyraptor put together in a Sultai deck. Awesome. Our opponent's hand has been awesome. And now we have Ascanta we gotta worry about. All right, so we're gonna put the counter on this with with Hadana's climb, so we can get a new one. They kill it, so now I I can activate it. Just want to make sure we can go get a new one, and we just kind of do the same thing next turn. Of course, they they got that Mortify for free with Ascanta. We're getting Growth Chamber Guardians for free. Do you remember that combo I told you with Kaya's ultimate and Silent Gravestone? Yeah, I had another idea with Mnemonic Betrayal instead of Gravestone. Yeah, that that works. One, two, three, four, five. So I'm kind of waiting a turn here. Like they know about the Hellkite. Krasis draws two cards right now, but if we get another land, it will draw three. So, like, one land means another another draw. 
So I'm gonna wait a turn, see if we if we get a, a land, we get another draw. Trust me, you'll thank me later. You need to take a time out. And there's the other land. And we can increase this for six, draw three. Now we get to hit for a bunch with this Winged Temple Hurry. flipped. We get some more haste creatures. Our opponent doesn't have a removal spell for this Krasis. It's he can attack for 14. No, you're not a noob for not knowing what Esper is. Esper is just the color combination that our opponent's playing. White, blue, and black put together. Well, if I didn't miss that six damage earlier. Now what? But of course, they would have used the moment of craving to save themselves here. But of course, they want to activate Escanta. Ah, uh, I don't like seeing that thought erasure. I see if they had like a a sweep rod, it was going to be able to double hell kite them, but. Got a decent land destruction deck. Um, there was, I had one before. There was one before that was like red white. All right, no removal. Before like the new format, there was a red white land destruction deck. Ugh, I haven't tried it with it with this format though. Um, here, the pen. Spell Pierce negate. I thought about Zagana in this list. So, so this list was a was a five zero list. That wasn't. This isn't my list here. Um, did we see any? We didn't see any enchantments, did we? I don't think so. No, they were playing black removal, contempt, moment of craving. I think I want to cut either two elves or two druids. I can cut one climb. Maybe two climb. Not nah, climb's pretty good. It's always best to play 60 cards in the deck. Uh, it just it kind of messes up like your your land ratio when you start putting in extra cards and play like 62 or 63, something like that. Um, and you have a lower percentage chance of drawing your very best spells that you want. Um, it's best to cut it down to 60 each time. I guess that's a stomping ground. Is this a this is a ground that's been stomped on? I guess. It just kind of looks like like I don't know some a city that's been that has a bunch of like spider webs on it, a bunch of rope around it. I 
I guess that qualifies as a stomping ground. Oh, search for Escanta. That's an enchantment. That's a good enchantment right there. Would I call you a madman for playing 189 cards? Oh, that sounds pretty good. Who is Hadana? That's a good question. I actually don't know who Hadana. Who is Hadana? Egoing Hellkite? Or Krasis? Maybe Krasis? Yesterday I started your Gates deck, and today I got it to a 5 1 finish, but then bricked with several 1 2s, which bummed me out. Do you have any suggestion which might be uh, just fun to play no matter the power level? Which deck might be just fun to play no matter the power level? That's, that's, on, that's honestly like one of the best decks to play as far as fun decks go, no matter the power level. Like, yeah, like that's a, that's a really good one. Uh, the, but I know you said you were, you were bummed out about it. Yeah, I absolutely do donation brews. Absolutely. The deck we played last time was a donation deck. This next deck that we're going to play after this, Marty Control, is a donation deck. Uh, I usually play like one to one or two donation decks every single day. So yeah, absolutely. I can know. You know what? I'm not done yet. Our opponent didn't just, like, put themselves dead, right? They know about the Hellkite in hand. So they, they have to have a cast down in their hand. No, I haven't tracked team. Yeah, they have to have cast down. Oh, you, you can talk about it, and you can talk about it in the in the chat if you'd like. I, I'm not planning on watching it. Okay, you don't have to worry about spoilers or anything like that. You're good. Dang it, my Hellkite. All right, so we're likely just going to be adapting this incubation druid here. Yeah, cinder vines could certainly be a good uh, sideboard option for us. Um, do I only attack two at Teferi or do I go all three at Teferi? I'm going to just go two. That's how it was meant to happen. Um, yeah, I think Cinder Vine's a pretty good card. Uh, with the Teamer Gates deck, I I took them out of the sideboard because I didn't like I didn't feel like the pinging one damage was enough. But I didn't I forgot about not having any enchantment removal whatsoever after taking it out. So I need to get some other some kind of enchantments in there. Some kind of enchantment removal. Sorry. In that, in that one, but yeah, this kind of this deck certainly does care quite a bit about um, uh, 
does care quite a bit about like the ping damage, so I could certainly see it being worth it. So I could play some Brontodons. Do I kind of take out some Krasis if they're just, their plan is to unmoor to Ego Krasis? That seems silly. Nah, I'm not going to have anything for Search for Kanta like that. Our life total doesn't matter too much. Let's get this land war off in on turn one. We could certainly draw a Gruul Spellbreaker or a Jade Light Ranger here and want the mana down. If not, we're attacking. gonna play one of these I know I only draw one card but just gets a creature in play okay we get to play Vivian Vivian kill search for Scanta that's big game See if you're worthy. That can't help you now. Get that thing out of here. Um, I've been, I actually like Warrant Warden and Esper. Uh, I've been kind of impressed with that card. I've, I've lost to Esper before with people, um, playing that card and just, just making 4 force and, you know, like me not being able to really deal with the 4 force even. Bringing in Thief of Sanity in this matchup. When I, I've the shown them a bunch of flyers. shield. Um So I can activate Hellkite next turn to kill the Thief of Sanity if the Hellkite's still around. So like our opponent needs to kill the Hellkite. I could certainly see them just casting. Okay, yes, yeah, so they're, they're just gonna cast Kai's Wrath um, and just get a, a two for four. But I have Vivian doing Vivian's thing. So that certainly made me play more defensive that, that turn. No one knows the wilds like I do. Why is Hellkite good in this deck? Because this deck's trying to attack, and Telkite does a great job at attacking. All right, am I Jade Lighting or Growth Chamber Guardian? I think I'm just going to Growth Chamber Guardian. I am shuffling all those lands that we just saw back in, but... Just hit next mythic with Bant Nexus. Way to go. Got to mythic. Good job. I won't hide from the keep up the pace. Man, they, they don't have any lands. So they have six spells in hand. I like a gruel spellbreaker here. I've seen things that would break someone okay. like you. Okay. Okay, we'll do. Oh. 
Stop that. Now. Hmm. So they can kill the Growth Chamber Guardian, of course, here, and I don't get another one, but I don't think it's worth it to just keep it in we hand and, and wait. Uh, I think we need more pressure on the battlefield. Yeah, you can certainly grind for a deck. Yep, absolutely. Yeah, we use negate or just haste creatures also help us deal with planeswalkers as well. That's really terrible for us, of course. That one's good, though. Haste. Alright, so they have four cards left. They're all spells. Yeah, we haven't seen any of our negates or spell pierces. Um, you know, we have five counter spells in our deck, and we, we didn't see any of them games two or three. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Could just do six and try to draw into a spell pierce. I'll just do seven. I guess Land War Elf is another card. And there's Land War Elf. Do you think Gruul decks are usually favored against control right now? I guess it, it depends, you know, it really depends on the build. Uh, you know, Gruul, Gruul, especially like Gruul X decks can really just be so many different things. But yeah, I guess it really depends on the build. Um, do I just go another big Krasis? So I can go Krasis for eight and draw four. Or I can wait a turn and next turn Krasis for ten and draw draw five if I wait a turn. I think I probably just go ahead and draw four right now. Hmm, those are some good cards. Wish I would have thrown out these Jade Light Rangers and just drawn four with Jade Lights. That could have been a little better. But I'm just doing this right now because they obviously don't have a removal spell for the Krasis right now. Otherwise, they would have used one. Um, so I'm, I'm going to try to pressure their life total with these two huge flyers here. Force them to block next turn. Oh, Vivian's just great. That's what I was looking for. Let's tear this place apart. Draw and fire. Do they have settle? Man, they are playing a lot of a lot of flyers. I guess I should have attacked with the Jade Light Ranger too. I don't know why I didn't. There's really no reason not to attack with that Jade Light Ranger. I'll just keep that spell pierce on top because if they want a thief of sanity and attack because like if they're like you know if they're yeah so like they're real um desperate so they're like looking for like their own crisis or something i don't know what what they can find from us um 
but Spell Pierce was not going to be it, so let's keep, let's I wanted slow. to keep no something like that on top with the Jade Lights. All right. Teamer gets the second one there. Fought through a lot of removal spells and wraths, but then our opponent started playing creatures, and we had bigger ones. Krasis looked incredibly strong in that game. Krasis was really good. Ugh. Of course, basically the reason why we win that is the, the Vivian on turn four, killing the search for Escanta. That, that was like really the play that, that won us that game. Vivian just got us a lot of cards. Yeah, Golgari Splash Krasis is certainly pretty strong. I I honestly like Bant with Krasis more. Um, but I, I think it's it's you know, like I think uh, it's easier to make the Soul Tide deck right now, how we just use the Golgari deck that, from last format as a uh, as um, a starting point. Hmm. I wanna play Hellkite next turn. So going with the Druid again, you know, Spellbreaker is like a, a more aggressive line, but I think that getting a 5-5 five, five Hellkite into play next turn sounds pretty good. Any suggestions for which deck? Zeo Black, thank you so much for subscribing there. I really do appreciate that support. Let's get some hype boats in the chat for our new sub. Sorry, uh, let's try to build from RNA. Got Is it Drakes and Red Deck wins done during G, during Guilds of Ravnica. Free to play, so not a big collection. I think you can. I think uh, Is it Drakes is still good. Uh, I think you can update Is it Drakes uh, with like Terramander, and I think it's still uh, a good deck. And kind of same thing with with Red Deck wins. Like those are both. Uh, find decks also uh, to kind of just update kind of thing Yeah, so this is the so it looks like we're playing against the Jun death whirler deck uh, looks like we're playing against you know um, Goblin chain whirler status and they do have the combo Must be nice Well, thank you so much Zio black saying I watch your stream every day and think you deserve it. That's very kind Hmm. Well, time to rebuild. Wow. Angrath against Spellbreaker. Just get to steal it. Your crew That's like the, the best you can do with Angrath. That's really good. <laughs> A fair price. So I can make a 4 4 Krasis. Kra uh, you know, Angrath also gets to steal Krasis, by the way, which is really cool. So 4 4 Krasis, draw 2. Um. Do I want to discard? Yeah, so they're going to take up their J. Their sorry, they're going to take up their Angrath. Do I want to discard one of these cards, or like, do I want to play the Breeding Pool, or do I want to just? I guess I just keep the Breeding Pool in hand to discard. How long has Arena been in beta? No fire. Um, no steel. Since around like October. Basically, since Guilds of Ravnica came out, that's when it's been an, an open beta. Closed beta was longer. I, I'm not exactly sure for closed beta. Hmm. Man, 
hand. Our hands weren't nearly as good whenever we played this deck. I didn't. I don't think I had treasure map though. No, we don't have any Gates of Blaze. You have to be playing Gates for Gates of Blaze. We don't have any Gates in our deck. No fire, no steel. Yeah, opponent's deck has looked really good this game. They do, they're they not able to activate the Hellkite. Um... Because it does not have a counter on it. So they look like they likely have like a some kind of removal spell, uh, like a burn spell, like a shock type thing. Yeah. And so I don't want to block the chain whirler because the first strike damage would have just killed my crisis. Um. I certainly need Hellkite to kill Angrath. Like that's just that's like just gonna happen. But it's like what am I doing for the next turn? Or like what am I doing else besides that? I can cast Growth Chamber Guardian, but then the Growth Chamber Guardian has to chump block the chain whirler. And I'd rather Start just Lanor Elf chump block the chain whirler. You're on your own. So I guess I'm just gonna have Lan like just sit back and try to chump with Lanor Elf. Yeah, we're dead to everything. And that's something. Alright, let's get another coil in here. Honestly, maybe I just want to be playing Negates. Yeah, like they have just a, a lot of things that are really good to negate. Okay, for Angrath uh, status statue, you know, so they don't just get to status their Chain Whirler and kill all my creatures again. Um, and then all their removal spells, Lava Coil, all that kind of stuff could hit a treasure map. A lot of good targets to negate. No, no gates today, Noxie. Uh, doing these ones over here. I'm going to, I'm pretty sure I'm going to play gates tomorrow. Because um, I was playing this Teamer deck, I didn't want to also play Teamer gates. I don't want to play two team or decks uh, the same day. Yeah, Rakdos Menagerie. We're going to play our um, Gruesome Menagerie deck with Rak in uh, Rakdos colors. Chain Whirler would be really bad. So that's why they have it. We have been getting wrecked by Chain Whirlers today. That previous game, of course, Chain Whirler destroyed us earlier. We got destroyed by Chain Whirler. Alright, hopefully we can untap and hold up Negate to protect our 5-5. Hopefully. Oh, 
Land Worlds are amazing in this metagame. It is one of the top three most played cards. Ugh. We can never die. Okay, it's never die. Going with haste? I don't like that. I don't like that one bit. So they just have Shivan Fire or Lava Coil. So it certainly looks like Shiv and Fire. If they, if they go Haste here, it's definitely Shiv and Fire. I would expect them to put a counter on that, though. Yeah, I think just putting a counter on that's a better play. We do get to kill the. We do get to kill the, the token here with our Sarkin Hellkite. The problem is we're just dead a lot faster than they are. Um, to their Sarkin Hellkite with us being at eight. Nice, Sadis. Uh, if you, especially if you watch the the mill video on YouTube, if you watch us play the deck, um, I'm not sure if you just saw the deck list on Stream Deck or if you watched the video. But at the end of the video, I changed up some stuff also that uh, I think I think it's a better list at the end. Um, and you can see it there on my YouTube channel, YouTube.com/c/toddstevensmtg. All right, so I have to do this right now because they gain they gain hexproof uh, during their turn because of the Gruel Spellbreaker. So I can't just like pass and like wait to see what to do with this Hellkite, um, especially if I'm just trying if I'm just planning on bolting them. Uh, I do not know if they fixed the gruesome Menagerie bug, honestly. Speaking of the YouTube channel, I need to get the Azori Super Friends one up. There. Bearded Wizard. Thank you so much for the sub. Thank you so much, Bearded Wizard. Hope you're having a wonderful end to your weekend. That is sub number six on the day. And we just got over five before this match, so we will be uh, going ahead and cracking a pack here after we lose this game. It's the 27th already. All right, pack time. Let's get a pack. 
All right, we're getting other Ravnica Allegiance packs today. Um, so I'm going to get a new set, uh, a different set. Um, let's go with the Guilds of Ravnica. I'm almost done with uh, Guilds of Ravnica. So let's go ahead and go with that. I think there's only two cards left. I think it's just Bounty of Might and Tajik. Ah, Bounty of Might. So I think there's just I think I only need one Tajik left now in the in the set. Yeah, Burly Man Ting Mobile is a wonderful option uh, if you want to switch your mobile contract where you just pay monthly, no contracts, you only pay for the amount you use. And yeah, just like you saw there in chat, if you go to Todd Stevens mtg.ting.com. Um, you can get $25 off your phone bill whenever you switch. The average monthly bill is just $23 for a phone, so you, you can get basically a free month for trying, and there's no contract, so you can even leave after that month as well. So you just pay for how much data, um, minutes, and messages you use. They use the Sprint uh, nationwide network, so you've got good coverage there. So check out toddstevensmtg.ting.com. See if you want to switch over um, to... To Ting. All right, we're two and one. Let's continue on. Uh, when you complete a set, um, just any, when you open up, if you open up a pack and you already have the set, then um, if you open up a rare, you just get 20 gems for the rare. If you open up a uh, a mythic, you get 40 gems for the mythic. So it doesn't make it advantageous to open up packs anymore from that set. Okay, what do we got? We got Incubation Druid into Hadana's Climb. Yeah, the 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 Ting Mobile banner is a link to that as like as well uh, in the in the description down in the info panel. You can click the Ting Mobile banner um, to go to, to go there as well. Hmm. We're playing against Gates. This looks like Bant Gates right now. Gates is so good. Usually people splash white in this deck or play white for Deafening Clarion and for Archway Angel are like the most common white cards that I've seen in the deck. What do you think is the worst standard block in Magic history? Uh, yeah, I, I've only really been playing standard since like World Wake, basically. So those ones like Mercadian Mask, like you said, like I, I didn't really play then, so I'm not I'm not sure um, if it is really bad. Um, but. Uh, I think recently, recently Kaladesh block was really Kaladesh block was awful. In like the recent, you know, last five years, Kaladesh block was probably the worst. It was really bad. Psychic corrosion. They're just a gate mill deck.
was hoping they didn't have another Gates of Blaze there right away. And or we could draw something. Oh no, we milled over Vivian and Incubation Druid. This is probably going to work out for the opponent. Just not have to have any creatures. Like They're going to draw a lot of cards with these Guild Summit. And the Guild Summits are going to mill a bunch. Another Vivian? Ugh, both our Vivians are gone. And a Hellkite? And then Growth Chamber Guardian. We could have got a lot of Growth Chamber Guardians. That would have been great with Hadana's Climb. It's like the first card on all of those were just like great cards to mill over for the opponent. So sad that that Krasis is gone. You know, that's going to leave because of Corrosion. But it, it does allow us to flip the uh, Winged... St the the um that oh so it mills it actually mills the second card first and then the first one that's weird we saw that animation there when it does the two cards it's not like the first and then the second there's hellkite lava coil and land those are good good ones to mill over we can attack for 10 next turn with this Jade Light. Almost enough to kill them. Woo! Unless they have instant speed removal. Eleven? No, they have instant speed removal. That's a bummer. Where's my girl spellbreakers? All right, so we figured out what the white's for. My opponent's saying good game. Where we could draw girl spellbreaker, which is probably pretty good. Maybe they have other things. Uh, two, four, six, or let's see, that's two, four, six, eight, ten, twelve. Two, four, six, eight, ten, twelve, fourteen. Oh, no, that's more. Oh, it's four. It's four per. Yeah, because they have two of those out, so it's four. Four per. Not two per. Turbo Mill. I can't ask the opponent for a deck list. This is arena, there's no no chat. Alright, let's get LeBronton in here, crushing canopy. Um if we gotta cut six more cards, what are we cutting? Crisis? Now that seems weird. Jade Light? That also seems weird. I guess we don't need Hadon's Climb. And then. Uh, hmm. We can go down a Crisis. And. Uh, <clears throat> spell pierce early in the game to counter like I want like spell pierce early is, is awesome. Let me just cut another crisis and a jade light. <laughs> crisis does draw cards which mills us faster, but um, you know hopefully those extra cards help us win before we get milled. Hopefully. Hmm. Well, we're keeping it. 
Because Hellkite kills our opponent quickly. It has... It's a, it's a big haste creature, so they, they use a wrath effect. Like, they use their Gates of Blaze or whatever, and then we Hellkite and kill them. Dr. Funky. With the sub. That gets some hype votes in the channel. Thank you so much, Dr. Funky. Glad to have you here. Seven subs on the day. All right, we got a five turn clock. Tagging for four each turn. Then we can untap and have negate available. Oh yeah, we're hasting. We're hasting real hard. Let's get this out for four. Instead of attacking for one with the land war elf. Should I have... I guess I should have played Hellkite. I should have played Hellkite. Like, they were just trying to... To settle me here. I should have just played Hellkite. Yeah, I should have just hasted um, Hellkite. Yeah, I know they cannot settle me because of the the spellbreaker. They're going to blaze for three, if they have a blaze. Ah, uh, they drew a gate, so now they get to a blaze for four. That's fortunate. So, if we would have hasted for four with the other Hellkite... Dang. Now we get him. We weren't going to have lethal that turn because they had explosion. Like, they would have killed our land war elf for explosion, and then they would have been able to do the uh, the gates ablaze. But as you see, with, with the gates, how they come into play tapped, as you see, like, our opponent doesn't usually have extra mana for the spell pierce. So I'm liking the spell pierce. Oh, we need some red mana, and uh, just some more mana in general. All right, Jade Light, that's why you're so good. Find us some lands. There you go. 
Good job, Jade Light. You're one Hellkite short of the list. I would play a Rekindling Phoenix. Or... Um... Or the new Gruul Mythic six mana creature that fights and can have haste and riot. That's another option. Alright, so I think I'm just going to activate the Incubation Druid and just attack them for 8. Um, just adapt it and just attack and not, not put anything else on the battlefield. Yeah, I think that's a, that's a good plan. We don't have to... Yeah, because they're, they're just a deck with just a bunch of sweepers. That's all they got. Alright, growth chamber, growth chamber guardian time. Do you know how the prize packs work at the end of the season? Do we get RNA packs only? I, I would think it would just be RNA packs. I would be surprised if it's anything else. So they're down to three cards. Ooh. One card and a guild gate. Alright, that one card's a psychic corrosion. That card's not very good here. Um. Yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna save my haste creature. I'll go and play it now. So even if they do have settle, which I don't think they do, because they said good game, we don't have to worry about it. Three and one. Oh, I never updated the, the record. It was two and one before. Now we're three and one. Thanks, real rank rankler. Alright, uh extra pack time. Bonus pack. Come on, Mythic. Mythic. Boo. Yeah, I'm, I'm not convinced mill gates is better than normal gates either. They got to mill us out. They got to like combo mill us out. But I mean, if you're just drawing all those cards with, with your other gates, I think I'd rather be just drawing all those cards. Yeah, Spellbreaker was awesome. Yeah, it seems a little unnecessary. We're going to be doing something fast. I don't know what it is. It may be nothing. Maybe we're doing nothing fast, but we're doing we're doing something fast. And maybe that something is nothing. It it may make that the the gate deck the mill gate deck is probably a better version against um, it's probably a better version against control. Like I, I bet like the mill enchantments are really good against control. I got three shocklands, but not a single gate. 
and 30 in a 35 packs hmm. Hydroid Crisis, please. <laughs> uh, the opponent must just be flooded with Conclave Tribunals. Ooh. That does something. That's a tilt. So they had one of those cards they could have played last turn. Either of those cards would have been better than Conclave Tribunal. I guess I need to flip this. I was planning on just making 2-2 two -two Elves, but I guess now that they have this flyer, uh, I can't just make 2-2 two -two Elves. I could actually flip the Hedonis Climb so I can have a Flying Blocker. This is sad. Yeah, I was always low on Rhythm, whatever I mean. I was always... I'm always low on Rhythm of the Wild, a lot lower than other people, and, and it, I think it's been basically exactly how I thought it was going to be. Hmm. Let's not tap all the red sources deck. All right, let's n now not flip Hadana's Climb. Um, I think it's it's awesome against Control, and it's awesome on turn two, but it's it's not good late. And even against like aggro decks like Boros, you, you don't have the time to play it. Yeah, Hellkite was our best draw possible. Hopefully they don't have another tribunal. I I kind of believe they will have another tribunal since they used that tribunal earlier. But that would be awesome if they don't have if they don't have tribunal, we're going to win. Uh, if they have tribunal, they're likely going to win kind of thing. Yeah, they're looks like they're tapping their creatures though, unfortunately for us. Yep, donation deck up next with Mardu Control. It looks pretty sweet. Well, all right, no, no Conclave Tribunal. That's it. Wow. Cannonade, Brontodon, Other Coil. Um. Hmm. I think Vivian comes out. Am I taking out Incubation Druid or Llanowar Elf since I'm bringing in Cannonade? A whole lot of threes. Maybe I just don't play Climb or Read or... One Druid. You think I should be taking Krasis out? Hmm. Krasis blocks pretty well. Oh, I have only tap lands. None of these are shock lands. That's bad.
All right, hopefully we draw the untapped land here. Untap land. Ugh. <laughs> As a Gates player, these lands seem perfectly fine. Well, we don't have Gates Ablaze, unfortunately. Benelish Marshall gonna kill us. We're trying again. Alright, gotta pick a modern deck. Jund, Dredge, Jeskai Control, Mill, Valakut, Burn, or Value Town. Um... I think you should play Jund. Yeah, the first hand against against Mono White there, we are we just didn't have anything like the first few turns and everything, and you can't have that against Mono White on the draw. Uh, we were just gonna get run over with that first hand. I want to coil this, but I also want to coil Benelish Marshall. I guess I, I'll, I'll save it. All right, done it is. I'd like to draw spells, deck. I'd like to draw any spell. Fiery Cannonade? That's a good one. We have Fiery Cannonades in the deck. Let's let's see if we get a draw a Fiery Cannonade. That'd be sweet. So even though I can play a Hydroid Crisis on two, I'm going to go ahead and Lava Coil. Keep them from flipping Legion's Landing. Um, and save the Crisis for, like, you know, next turn Hellkite. Oh, I should have just played the Breeding Pool, though. I think I didn't play it. Yeah, I, I need to play the Breeding Pool here, though. I was just think I was thinking about that, not really as much what the land to play. That's bad. Um... Uh, and they did have the Banalish Marshal. Just... Just killing me. Our opponent is quite literally, quite literally killing us. It's conclave tribunals have been devastating.
Uh oh. Hmm. A Danto Vanguard, huh? I could still use that fiery cannonade, or another lava coil, or another hydroid crisis. That's certainly a turn where not playing that breeding pool earlier hurt us. If we played that breeding pool earlier, I would have been able to spellbreaker this turn. Okay, that's that's good. That's certainly good. Not dead yet. All right, another crisis or a hell kite. Hell kite would be great. Yeah, cannonade's probably just our best draw. I guess we just need cannonade. You think this game's over? I mean, I guess if we draw cannonade, it could not be over. Cannonade, cannonade. We got three of them. We've seen 16 cards so far. We haven't seen one. That means we have a great chance. It's always the 17th. Lucky number 17. Bleh, didn't work. Yeah, the DD stands for a donation deck. Uh, a deck that it, somebody donated to see. All right, we ended up three and two with Tima. It kind of felt like a, a three and two kind of deck. It, it felt, you know, it felt good, but not like amazing. Um, I don't know. Ex it seemed like we didn't have quite enough removal in our deck, but then of course, you know, you can't have tons of removal against the control decks. Um, but yeah, I felt like we were missing some something. Like, I'm not. The more like I was, I was super super impressed with Growth Chamber Guardian whenever I first started playing it. But the more and more I've been playing it, the less impressed I have been. And honestly, I think that this kind of deck, just playing Merfolk Branch Walkers and Wild Growth Walkers, uh, would be an upgrade. Now, of course, that takes eight slots, and four of them can be the Growth Chamber Guardians. Um, but then the other four, I'm not sure, like, I'm not sure if you want to play, get rid of the druids. Like I, I was really happy with the druids, uh, getting to these other bigger spells and druid is just amazing with Krasis. Uh, so I don't know exactly where you would fit in both of those, but it certainly felt like, um, we were kind of missing that. Like maybe wild growth walker is just in the sideboard for the aggro decks and you just have br branch walkers here. Um, but we didn't really use very much in our sideboard. Didn't draw a whole lot of sideboard cards, just kind of overall. Uh, I'm not really sold on this incubation incongruity card, but I guess that's maybe like something for like angels, I guess. I'm not, I feel like this is, could be like a main deck card, but just sitting in our sideboard, didn't really have any matchups where I necessarily wanted to bring this in. Uh, I could see just playing like some more Vivians in that slot if you're worried about big flyers where Vivian can be removal there and also be just a great card against uh, control and stuff like that.
So there we go. That was Teamer Midrange. All right. Um, so if you're watching this over on YouTube later, don't forget to hit that subscribe button. Thanks for watching. I'll see you for the next video.